This is Matthew McConaughey. Natalie Portman. James Patterson. Michael Ian Black. And you are listening to Five Questions with Dan Chabell. Jerry, welcome to Five Questions. Man, it's so exciting to be here. Thanks for uh, having me. I'm going to answer these five questions to the best of my ability, and I hope uh, uh, there's a takeaway. That's what we call in in the interview business, that people have a takeaway from this. Absolutely. They take something away. What influenced you to become an actor at such a young age? You know... um, uh, I'm in my 40s, my late 40s, and uh, they called me hyperactive. That was like the word. I think they call it ADHD now, but um, they called me hyperactive. And um, I was always getting in trouble, not like prison trouble, but like, you know, shut up. He talks too much. He talks out of turn. Uh, he can't concentrate. He's everywhere. Um, and I always felt... Um, out of place. Like I didn't belong anywhere that I didn't belong anywhere. And man, I took, started to take acting classes when I was about 10. And then I was in stand by me at 11. And when I got on that set at stand by me, um, it was the first place that when I was acting myself, uh, which I had been told was hyperactive, you know, when I was acting my hyperactive self uh, and I'd be like, Oh gosh, sorry, everybody. Uh, I'll, I'll calm down. I'll calm down. Um, my bosses, Rob Reiner, people around the show said to me, no, no, no. That's how we want you to act. We want you to act more like that. So I really at a very early age felt very comfortable um, performing. I really love that. And it really resonates with me. I got in trouble pretty much every single day in elementary school. I was on the bench so much that I think I like started to break the bench. (laughs) It was me, my principal and her three legged goat hanging out regularly. Is that a, is that a euphemism or like a joke? Oh no, that was my, that was my childhood. (laughs) Or part. There was actually a goat that was three legged. Yep. Principal had a three-legged goat, and it was me on the bench because I couldn't sit down for a second. And now look where I am. So I'm I'm speaking to you, who has also been through something at least somewhat similar. Probably not with the goat, though. I've never, I've never seen a three-legged goat. (laughs) (laughs) So, what were the challenges as you transitioned from being an actor to hosting shows? Um, no challenges really. Uh. The challenges, you know, um, you know, I, I, I host that show Pictionary now. It's like on Fox stations. It's, it's a game show. Uh, I would say like having to follow rules. I know that sounds like, well, of course there are rules, but like having to like know where contestants have to go, know where celebrities have to go, know where the cameras are, know what, And at the same time, run a game, you know? And it's not like game night where you're just drinking with your friends. It's like, there's like TV, there's like camera shots and it's like more, it's like a skill set, you know? I mean, it's why when you see people like Alex Trebek and um, Wayne Brady do it, they do it with such ease. Drew Carey, Steve Harvey. Um, they're really uh, super talented at what they do. You know, they're just, they're just really good. It's like a skill set that I don't quite yet have. And it's funny if you watch me on Pictionary, like I'm raw, I'm like not, I'm not polished. I'm not, I'm not that good at it yet. And aside from the challenges for, from hosting Pictionary, what, what have you most enjoyed about it? Um, giving people money, giving people money, giving people thousands of dollars and trips. Um, it's like an everlasting memory. People get stoked. 
man, somebody wins two grand and a trip on a princess cruise, that's, that's huge, you know? So I'd say people winning. Um, and, you know, if, you know, two people win, two people got to lose. I try to make sure that the people who lost have a good time too, that there's some sort of memory or maybe like some sort of story. And um, I think of people watching at home, you know, I mean, it's daytime TV. So, you know, um, as a daytime viewer, I watched a lot of daytime TV when I was stuck at home with my kids when they were babies, you know, when my wife was working and um, you yearn for entertainment, you know, and uh, you yearn for entertainment that isn't Instagram or, you know, um, social media, uh, something that's live, that's interactive, that's people, you know, um, so uh, that's what I think of too. Yeah. And we all grew up with that game too. So it's kind of hey, tell cool me to be able to host getting, it. Tell me when these answers are getting too long. No, they're great. You're doing a good job. Uh, so you good. are actually also hosting a show with your wife too. So you have that, you have, you know, Pictionary, you have a lot of stuff going on. How do you manage your time between being a host, a father, and a husband? You know, I, I haven't, I've really never been this busy, so I don't take it for granted. I was pretty much abjectly unemployed during the pandemic. I mean, abjectly unemployed. So I don't, um, I don't, uh, I just don't get too excited about it. I know that at any time these shows get canceled and that's it. You're, you're done. You're back. Uh, I'm back in my underwear. Um, you know, on my couch. <laughs> um, so I, uh, I just try not to get too excited when it's busy. I try not to get too excited when it's not busy because it's been my experience that most of the time you're unbusy. So um, just don't freak out, you know? Makes sense. And what's your best piece of career advice? You know, I'm, I'm lucky enough also to have a, a spouse who's pretty successful. Um, Rebecca Romaine, look her up. And um, it's really, uh, it's really helpful when um, you have someone to go through it with, you know? Absolutely. And what's your best piece of career advice? Follow your passion. I'm kidding. No. You told me not to say that. You told me not to say that. <laughs> That's the easy uh, way out. Best piece of career advice. Man, let me really think about this. We talked about giving people takeaways. Um, what has someone told you for advice or what have you lived that you feel like you did something and you'd like that you know, to share that with someone be, else? This is going to be so... This is going to be so, um, you know what? I don't even care if it's like kind of weird, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it anyway. I did a Broadway show with Alan Rickman called Seminar. Look it up. It's a big hit. He was the best legend. The stuff legends are made of. Alan Rickman, Professor Snape. And when we started the play, he and I entered from the same entrance backstage. So it was totally dark, pitch black. Uh, hundreds of people on the other side of the curtain, on the other side of the set. And every night, you know, you get like, when you do a play over and over again, we did that show 300 times, over 300 times. You get into a rhythm, you go to your same spots, you do your same things, you say your same lines, you do your same things, you get, you're a creature of habit. And Alan Rickman, before we did every show would grab my arm and, and just lean in and go like quietly. Cause it was, you, 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 you could hear a pin drop. He would just say, remember to breathe like Alan Rickman. And it's like, he was just saying it. Like you're going on stage, you're excited, you're saying lines, you're doing stuff. And you, and I really, I gotta tell you, I can't tell you anytime I'm in a situation, any situation that is somewhat excitable, doing a show, doing your show, doing in traffic, um, 
yelling at my kids. I really just think to myself, Alan Rickman grabbing my arm and saying, remember to breathe. And I actually, before I do um, this show Pictionary, there's like a stage manager that, that hangs out with me. And I said to him, I was like, hey man, every time before I go out and do the show, I got, I'm going to say to you, what do I have to remember to do? And then you're going to say, you have to remember to breathe. And I, it's just something, you just got to remember to breathe. I, I, I know that's not like, you know, uh, send your resumes, apply through college, through the athletic mm -hmm. department. Like, I know that's not like tangible advice, but I swear to you, it'll really help you. Remember I really think it is everybody. tangible. I think it's really tangible because it's something that everyone can do. And everyone needs like a pause and to, and to kind of take things in in that given moment because, you know, people are stressed out or have been stressed out. Dan, remember to breathe. <laughs> well, that's great advice. And thank you so much for being on the show. Hey, thank you. That was a lot of fun.